Welcome everybody, welcome to the show. Welcome to this Wall Street Italia Tech special. Let me bring to the show Daniel Lice, Managing Director of Equity Research with Bush Securities. Good morning, Dan, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, great to be here, thanks. So Dan, I'd like to kick off with the tech sector, of course, and, and certainly what we all want to know is whether this is actually the dip. Look, I mean, this is probably as panicked as I've seen outside of early days of COVID going back to 08, 09. You know, and parts of it almost seem similar to dot-com bubble and burst because of this just massive risk off across tech sector. You know, I believe tech is, especially in terms of quality tech, I'll call it stalwart names like Apple, Microsoft, some of the other fang names, you know, Amazon, cybersecurity. I think tech's way oversold here. You know, I believe we're starting to be in some sort of bottoming process here. The carnage continues to be there. But ultimately, I think on the other side of this, unless there's a massive recession, I think stocks right now are bottoming. And I think stocks will be up significantly second half of the year. So I was wondering, do you think that actually the worst is yet to come? Look, I mean, there's many... We'll call them haters. They yell fire in a crowd of fear. They've done it for the last 12 years. They'll do it today, right? So there's always about that other black swan event. I look at it today and be like, right now, baked into the market are pretty significant negative expectations. Plus, in the situation where you have a horrific Ukraine situation, you got zero COVID in China. So there's so many, we'll call it black swan events. If anything goes right, just a little right, stock significantly rebounds from here. Look, I think right now, I mean, you're seeing a have and have nots in tech. Work from home, COVID beneficiaries, those stocks continue to get crushed, Peloton, Zoom, among others. But I believe babies thrown out with a bathwater. I mean, there's a lot of these tech names that I believe right now, relative to growth, are sitting at what I'll call trough multiples going back the last decade. So I just wanted to focus on Tesla for a second because certainly uh, what's going on with the stock is extremely interesting. Let me just kick off with the fact that you're one of the most prominent uh, Tesla bulls on Wall Street. But uh, despite the fact you lowered your uh, target price from $1.400 to $1,000 and of course rating outperformed that for sure. But talk to us, why, why did you decide to lower uh, your price target? Look, it's really about China. I mean, all of our checks in China, it's really been, I mean, without calling a smoke and mirror, I mean, it's an epic disaster, it, essentially for Tesla, because so much of the production comes out of China. The zero COVID's really crushed them. Deliveries have been very slow, and they're going to miss deliveries in the second quarter, and I think they'll be slow for the rest of the year, and that's why we lowered numbers. I also think there's just a massive risk off. And clearly, the circus show with Twitter has added to that. It's the worst deal at the worst time relative to what we've seen with Musk. And I think the lack of situational awareness, you've seen a, a risk off accelerated in Tesla's shares that continues to play out. In fact, you just said it and we're talking about Twitter. So do you think the, the Musk Twitter saga is going to continue to negatively impact uh, on Tesla's stock? I think it does, unless he totally walks away from the deal, and then ultimately will probably get caught up in the courts. Right now, call it a 60% chance that he tries to leave the deal. But you know, I ultimately believe at the end of the day, he's trying to go for a lower deal, a lower deal price, somewhere in the low to mid-40s. And I think in terms of Tesla stock, it becomes a Siamese twin situation in terms of how those almost are inversely uh, linked between Twitter and Tesla. And I think Musk is, I think he underestimated just the whole situation here. And it's really become just a twilight zone. So, so do you think that actually if the deal is going to be off, uh, we're going to see Tesla surging once again? If the deal is off, it takes off 100 to $150 per share over right away. I mean, so that's, look, we even saw on Friday worries about, has the stock continuing to move down? What does that mean? Does he get margin calls in terms of must? Does he have to add more Tesla shares? Does he have to sell more stock? Look, and for someone that owns 23% of the company in the hearts and lungs of Tesla, it's been a major overhang playing out in the biggest risk-off market we've seen since 2009. 
then uh, I mean this is a question apart uh, from tech sector. Do you also think, guys, in the U.S. that Musk is kind of trying to enter into politics, or this is just some thought that, um, let's say, European media's or uh, media outlets are having? Look, it's become just it's it, it bec- it's almost cascaded into just a soap opera that I think also has negative political blowback, right? In terms of for Tesla, for SpaceX. And this is also at a time that you want Musk totally focused on Tesla. You know, instead, at least the perceptions reality in terms of, you know, the Twitter distractions. And I think right now, I mean, this, you know, it's part of been the overhang on the stock. No doubt China, fundamentally, that's really why the stock continues to move down. But this thing's turned into a life of its own. And as we know, Musk, he, he's probably not going to, you know, just stay quiet and go in the corner. I mean, this will continue to increase, and especially going to Twitter shareholder meeting later this week. Uh, and, and final take on Twitter Musk's story. If, uh, let's say, Musk is about to walk off the deal, what's happening to Twitter in terms of price? Well, first off, they'll fight that in court basically saying he has no right from a diligence perspective to walk away. And now probably get caught in the court 12 to 18 months. For Twitter, it's it's a disaster. It's a nightmare because the fake bot, fake account issue, Wall Street will now not believe the numbers because of the Musk situation. Probably Twitter stock if Musk walks away would probably be, I'd say, high 20s in terms of where that stock would go to. And then this would really be bruised or battered trying to be a standalone public, public company. And that's it's a big issue in a jittery market, uh, you know, for the board as well as for the company to navigate. Dan, let me let me talk about Apple. Uh, I just wanted to quote your uh, phrase, you know, from your um, weekly report, Apple compelling name to own and ride out the market storm. Uh, why does Apple remain your, let's say, first choice when it comes to tech stocks? Look, it's the install base. I mean, you still have 250 million of a billion that haven't upgraded their phones in three and a half to four years. I mean, I think that's going to continue to be a growth vehicle in the next 12 to 18 months, including even in China, where they gain share. I think the services business is a key part of the re-rating in Apple. And I think this is a good example of, okay, the work from home names, a lot of the froth, profitless tech. Some of these names could go away, but look at Apple. I mean, Apple has sold off significantly here. And I believe the industry is underestimating the longer term growth story when we look at it in the next six, nine, 12 months. And, and final take, apart from China, do you have other concerns related to, uh, you know, Apple's performance in the medium to long term, also from the demand side, considering the fact that inflationary pressures are here to stay, or at least, or at least it looks like? Yeah, I mean, look, they're a unique model where they could add 100 hours per iPhone and probably churn would be incrementally 1% maybe. So they have the ability to pass that on to the consumer. They have found more efficiency in terms of using their own chips. But no doubt, look, a recession, softer macro, especially with food, gas prices across the board, people are more focused on essentials than buying new iPhones. So that will definitely incrementally, you know, impact demand. But it goes back to like, okay, what's baked into the stock? I mean, I believe that dynamic and more is already baked into the name, which is why we'd be buying the stock here. And I continue to view as a rock and Gibraltar stock. And and Dan, final take on tech stocks. Um, We do see, of course, the Nasdaq kind of trying to bounce back into pre-market action. On the other side, it's up about 15%. Um, in the past month, of course. So do you think this is a good moment to buy the dip? Look, I think if you have a horizon outside of a day or a month, longer term for high quality tech, we view it as more of a generational opportunity, you know, in, in terms of what, and that's been our playbook in terms of how we navigated the, the bubble and the burst back, you know, over 20 years ago in 08, 09. It's find the right names, it's having that risk, tolerance it's going to be rocky it's going to be a roller coaster the headlines are a disaster but it goes back to what's baked in here and this has basically been even though people that call it not a crash it's basically a market that's gone down every day for the last five months and i believe when i look at tech stocks way oversold especially high quality tech stalwarts means like apple amazon google cybersecurity, cloud microsoft among others 
Uh, and I think that's where we'd be focused, you know, in this jittery white knuckle tape. Right. Thank you very much, John Elias, Managing Thank Director of Equity Research with Boost Securities. Thanks for joining us and have a great day, Don. You too.